Scotland. civilised. Well, there are advantages to being suddenly childless. Welcome to breakfast, as it used to be. Certainly makes a nice change to have some peace and quiet in the morning. Toast. Thank you. Keep breathing. Are you asthmatic? Okay. Calm down. Just take it easy. Can you tell me what happened? Is this somebody that you know? Jack. Oh, Jack. 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 Okay. Well, um, if you're feeling better, then I'm going to get back to work. You can keep it. Thank you. Jack. Jack. Oh, I'm glad I caught you before Jimmy gets in. What's up? It's Eva's birthday. Oh. Yeah, I think Jimmy's going to be in pieces today. I suppose if I'd remembered, I could have given him the day off. I still could, I guess, if he looks to be struggling. Mm. Well, it might be the best place for him to take his mind off things a bit. Oh, but don't forget, he's on his own at the campus later. Oh, yeah, that's good thinking. OK, I'll send Daniel instead. I think we should treat him with kid gloves today. What's this? Jimmy, it's Eva's birthday. Oh, poor Jimmy. Of course, he might have forgotten. Jimmy never forgets anybody's birthday. Yeah, especially not his girlfriend. We're going to be dead a few months. Can you believe her? Got anything for me? Anything for me? Leatherbridge News. Who? Jason Jones. Anyone know Jason Jones? I'm Jason Jones. Hello. That's me, yep, yeah, facing the... Look, you're not supposed to call me. I'm, I'm freelance. There's a number at the bottom of... I'm not being funny, like, but how do you lose a fiancé? Try me. Eve Mitten's soul just got more heart than you, Lily. Oh, put a sock in it, you two. It was only an observation. I don't understand why you're getting so emotional. That's because you don't have any emotions. I think you mean the tin man. Tin soldier melted into a tiny little tin heart when the Pope ballerina. Jimmy's here, Jimmy's here, Jimmy's here. Kick gloves, OK? Morning. Oh, morning, morning, Jimmy. Jimmy. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, is anyone reading this? Right, see you later. Bonjour. Oh, welcome back. How was your holiday? More to the point. How's my favourite little girl? She's gone back to her mother. Oh. Well, that's... Uh, that's um... great. Really, it's, it's, it's for the best. How yeah, much as I've enjoyed getting to know her, um, it was getting to the stage where she needed her mum, and I'm not cut out for single fatherhood, so... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure that it's, um, I'm sure it is for the best, yeah. I'm only really going to miss it, though. Hmm. But you will, too. Of course. I won't miss the broken nights or the lack of a social life, that's for sure. To be honest, I'm quite looking forward to getting back in the groove. Hmm. Jason Jones. 
Love Day Heart. And this is my fiance, Jack Smith. The lost fiance. Intriguing. We met in Java backpacking. Have you travelled? Still on the to-do list. Oh, you should. Everyone should once in their lives. I knew he was the one. The minute I set eyes on him. Do you believe in love at first sight? Uh, uh... It exists. It's like realising in a single moment that you've only ever been half a pair. And then, in that split second of recognition, you become a whole. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We travelled all over Asia, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia. We were running out of money by the time we got to Thailand, so we rented a beach hut. Jack got a job in a bar and I kept hooked for us. Sounds idyllic. I thought we'd be together forever. Uh, what happened? That morning, we woke up and just knew something wasn't right. It was a silence. Usually in the morning, the birds were deafening. Well, that day, they were quiet. Gone. Then I noticed the children screaming and... <laughs> it's all right. Take it slowly. It was like uh, throwing a bucket of water at an ant's nest. The tsunami? Were you hurt? Broken arm. And a missing fiancé. Everything was gone, you see. Phone, documents, passport, and the chaos. Hideous, awful chaos. That must have been over four years ago. And that was the last time you saw him? Until today. Well, I saw your photograph. Ooh, jackpot. Hi, Fiona. It's Daniel here. You remember the doctor? Uh, sorry, bit of a dump. <laughs> oh, no, I think it has loads of potential. I just shoot and hand it over. The paper chooses who goes in. How do you pick who to photograph? Usually people who look like they could do with the hundred quid. You mean poor people? Yeah, and sometimes there's just something about them. There's something in their eyes, I don't know. They just look like they could do with some good news. Did Jack have something in his eyes? No, something in his hand, a stop smoking leaflet. Took me three years to give up, so I figured he deserved something for his resolve. I think you're very special. It was outside a doctor's surgery. Do you know the name? No, but I could find it. And you do that for me? You hardly know me. I wasn't planning on doing it for nothing. Oh, <laughs> I don't have much money. That's all right. I'll take payment in kind. No, no, I didn't mean... I, I meant I want an exclusive of the Happy Reunion. Oh. Photos, <laughs> interview. Let's see. That's Jack. <sighs> nice photo. We're closed. Please, it's urgent. You gave her an eight and a half? Yeah. And trust me, I'm a hard mucker. What's the uh, smiley face for? <laughs> I didn't give it a ten for that. <laughs> I 
remember thinking that at least we were going to die together. And then we were washed into a tree and managed to cling on. But the water was so strong and we got so tired. Jack lashed me to the tree with his belt because, because he thought he'd be able to hang on longer. But he was struggling. So I grabbed his hand and I was shouting, Don't let go, Jack. Never let go. And then his fingers just slipped out of mine and he was gone. She never saw him again until... What, you just lost him? I looked everywhere. First the hospitals, then the refugee camps, then the morgues. After being in the water, they all looked the same. Young and old, Thai, European. I looked at every one. When the casualty list was published, I knew he was alive, but I couldn't find him. That's the most tragic thing I've ever heard. Did you hear that, Lily? Is he one of yours? Uh, no, thank goodness. Michelle, two words. Patient confidentiality. The same. He must have picked it up in here. I know he did. I met you this morning and now I'm here. Do you think that was a coincidence? What, like fate or something? Don't you believe in karma? Uh, no. He was here. I know he was. I can feel him. Well, where else did he get the leaflet? Somebody must recognise him. I can't believe I'm so close, finally. And... OK, calm down. I, I think we should take her to my room. Come on. And with no passport, she was repatriated. Then I met someone who'd seen Jack in Japan. India was where we were going after Thailand, you see, so as soon as my new passport arrived, I set off. You followed him all the way to India? Then Nepal, then China. We planned it together so I knew his route. But you never found him. I came so close. I'd arrive at some backpacking hostel and they'd look at me and say, you're the girl in the photograph. So I knew he was looking for me too. The trail went cold, so she figured he must have come home. She's been looking for him ever since. Please help me. Hi. Oh, just the person. We're going to have a drink with Ronnie later on, so why don't you join us? Uh, yeah, thanks. I've got a football match. Football match? Yeah, it's a charity football match. Leatherbridge sports personalities versus the media personalities. I don't know what you're thinking. I'm neither a sports or a media personality or even a personality, but I am, however, the referee, so... Another time, yeah? How did he seem to you? He seems fine. Exactly. But it's not fine that he's fine. Not today. Well, you know Jimmy. I tried to talk to him at the time, but he didn't seem to want to and I didn't push it. Maybe that was a bad call. I'm just worried he's going to head for a crash. Well, maybe we could suggest some bereavement counselling. Yeah. Well, are you going to drag him kicking and screaming or shall I? <laughs> hmm. I'll do my best. Thanks. Any information at all would be really grateful. Oh, that's awful. It's like a movie. I oh, know. I checked and he's not a patient, but we do stop those leaflets in reception. Maybe he came in with a patient and picked it up then. Mm. Not that again. I can't believe you're all taking it so seriously. Has it occurred to anyone that he may be married with a brood of children by now? No wedding ring, see? Oh, well, that's all right, then. Oh, have a heart, Lily. The poor girl's lost her fiancé. I mean, her soulmate. Soulmate. Movies, books, and a lot of disappointed people. Well, actually, I think that's very cynical of you. I believe in them. Well, for some people. Yes, yeah, so do I. Third it. What about Antony and Cleopatra? Abelard and Eloise? Posh and Bex. Henry II and Eleanor of Aquitaine? I believe in soulmates, as long as it's plural. You recognise him, don't you? I've never seen him before in my life. At least we know he's in Leatherbridge, that's something. I need to go and take a few shots for facing the street. Why don't you go and get a cup of coffee and something to eat? I'll call you if I hear anything. OK. We'll find him. I promise. Jack! Oh, 
sorry. Come on, Lily. Out with it. What do you mean? I know you recognise him, and he's not a patient, so there's no reason for you to keep it to yourself. There is a reason. It's none of our business. Oh. And in an era of mass communication, it strikes me that after four years, she might have found him by now. Unless, of course, he doesn't want to be found. That's just so cynical. No, it's pragmatic. What are you doing? I'm not leaving here till you tell me. <laughs> are you staging a sit-in? If you like. No, I don't like. Very well. In the interest of getting you out of my office, I'm 94% certain he's the delivery man for the office supplier. I saw him unloading the van the other day. Happy now? Yes, thank you. And, having extorted that information, may I offer a word of advice and suggest you keep it to yourself? I thought someone might get some use out of them. It must be hard for you. Uh, it's like I said earlier, I think it's for the best. Just I remember how I felt when Ronnie took Bracken. Totally different circumstances. All done. Ooh, Fiona. How are you? Oh, bear with me one second. For me, there are certain compensations. Mm. Yeah, hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm great, thanks. You? Oh, come on, Vivian. She's been looking for him all these years, and now she's found out that he might have been here at, like, less than a mile from where she works. It's so romantic. Stuff and nonsense. Vivian! Dr Hassan was right. It's not in our remit. <laughs> I should have known you'd agree with her. You're like two peas in a pod, you and Lily, aren't they, Heston? In the sense that only the tip of the iceberg is visible. What stirs beneath is anyone's guess. On your head be it. Yeah, yesterday's deliveries. Mm-hmm. Ah, there was just the one. Office Unlimited, stationery suppliers. Thank you. Oh, have you uh, got a number? Hi. Hi, Michelle. That's... great. Should be able to, yeah. I'll, I'll let her know straight away. Hi, it's me. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Good news. Ah! Oh, oh, thank you. Oh. That's just awful. I oh, know. She was calling after him. Don't let go, Jack. And then his hand slipped out of hers and he was gone. Isn't that from Titanic? You are. Oh. You know, never let go, Jack. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, so I told her I might have some information and she's coming back for surgery. And Heston's ordered a whole lot of urgent stationery, so. Oh. Wish I was there. I know it's cool, isn't it? <gasps> Can't wait to see the look on their faces. <laughs> Jack! Jack! Love's good. Just what have I got to do to get shot of you, you mad cow? Hang on, I, I thought she was your fiance. Well, you thought? Is this your fault? I don't know what she's told you, but it was a fling, that's all. Fun at the start, but then she got, you know, really heavy and, and clingy, like crazy clingy. What about the tsunami? Oh, yeah, that. My get out of jail free card. I've been trying to shake her off for weeks, but she wouldn't get the hint. Afterwards, in all the chaos and that, it seemed like a good idea to slip away. You just left her? No. I just didn't exactly hang around looking for her. And as it turned out, I didn't need to. Because guess what? She came looking for me like some backpacking bunny boiler. I'd arrive places and there'd be missing posters of me in all the bars and hostels. You were looking for me. You showed people my photo. To check if you were in town. <laughs> Any wind and I'd be out of there. 
I nearly booked into the same hostel as you in Humla one night. Legged it pretty quickly, I can tell you. Oh, I'm telling you, she's a crazy little Just bit. watch your mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. And you are? Jason Jones, Leatherbridge Gazette, freelance. He's got the press looking for me now. What's next? Are you gonna ride to Blue Peter? You said you love me. Well, yeah, when we were having sex, you were pretty good at one thing, I'll give you that. <laughs> Oh dear. All yours. Thank you. Philip Nash. I thought once I was back, she'd give up. But then she started a website. Where is Jack Smith? Chain emails. Oh, and she's got a blog, searching for Jack. Mind you, at least that meant I was able to keep one step ahead of her if it looked like she was getting close. I've moved five times in the last three years. Do you know what it's like having complete strangers stopping you all the time and saying, oh, I think someone's looking for you? Well, wouldn't it have been better just to get in touch with her and tell her it was all over? <sighs> Are you nuts? She's a psycho. I didn't want anything to do with her. She'd gone quiet since I moved to Leatherbridge and I was finally beginning to think she'd given up. And now, this! Well, there's no fracture, but you'll have a spectacular black eye. <sighs> I am so sorry. I, I was only trying to help. Yeah, well, thanks for nothing. I want to make a complaint about her. Well, please don't make it to me. Well, then who do I make it to? Our practice manager, Julia Parsons, but she's not here at the moment. You'll have to come back. Oh, I will. This isn't like some TV show, you know. Just because you're a nurse doesn't mean you can go around poking your big oar in other people's lives. I don't drink spirits. It's medicinal, it'll do you good. Go on. You must think I'm such an idiot. He's the idiot. Any guy would be lucky to have a girl like you. You hit him. For me. Should have hit him harder. I mean, how anyone could do that to... someone like you. Oh, thanks. A football match today, of all days. Sounds like major displacement activity to me. Well, maybe it's just his way of taking his mind off things. Yeah, maybe it's just his way of bottling it all up. I'll tell you what, though. Why don't I invite him round to dinner next week? You and Ronnie come, yeah? Yeah, I mean, company of close friends, somewhere where he feels comfortable, some well-chosen wine. Might open up a bit. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. What's a good idea? Hiya. Hi. Ah, Nurse Corrigan, there you are. There's someone to see you. If you're here to see the practice manager, then I'm afraid she's left for the evening. Yeah, uh, look, I'm sorry about all of that earlier. Actually, I, I wanted to thank you. You are? Well, that monkey she had with her called me and said, Looney Loveday never wants to see or hear from me again. Uh, you were right. It was best to have it out. I only wish I'd done it sooner now. <laughs> anyway, she's out of my life forever. Oh, and I'm a hundred quid richer. So cheers. My pleasure. <laughs> oh. I'm free. <laughs> Uh, that's what I call a turn up for the books. I'd call it a lucky escape. Yeah, then, Daniel. Um, I'm really sorry about tonight. Yeah, I just went crazy all of a sudden. Yeah, and because students, you know, they all get it. Yeah. But look, I'm gutted. I'm gutted about that too. So um, let's take a rain check. Okay, great, lovely. Bye bye. Bye, Fiona. Bye.
Oh, Lord, will it never end? Engaged? It was his grandmother's. She said, Jason, when you find the woman whose finger fits this ring, then you'll know just by looking at her. And I did. And it fitted like Cinderella's shoe. <laughs> but what about Jack? That wasn't love. I know that now. It was just infatuation or something. Jack never made me feel like this. Safe and cherished and, and beautiful. How can anyone not think you were beautiful? <laughs> it was fate meeting you today. I thought you were going to lead me to Jack, but instead you led me to my true destiny. Our true destiny. Oh, I'm really happy it's worked out for you both. <laughs> Thanks to you. Do you hear that, Lily? They're engaged. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. It was embarrassing. You could have been a bit more enthusiastic. It was like you didn't want to go for dinner at Julia's. Did you not recall the last time? Oh, stop it. All right, if you want to know the truth, it sounds more like an intervention than a dinner party. Then why can't you two just back off and let Jimmy deal with it in his own way? What, like the man's way? Bottle it up, let it ferment and wait for it to explode. George, no, sometimes it's not good to talk. Look, Julia, I'll be back in a minute. Just be over yourself. And don't give me that look. What look? That look. That no good will come of this look. I hate it. Fine. Well, you can just wallow in self-pity then. What? I don't care how bad you feel. What are you going to do to get Izzy back? Yes. Mrs Rubin, can you help me? I've been mugged. Oh. They've taken my phone, car keys and wallet. What's all that got to do with me? Just recently, your behaviour has been well, a bit erratic. You're grieving. Stop, OK? Stop, cos I, I can't go on with this. Jimmy. No, they may as well know. Know what? I'm intrigued. A difficult choice between what the hospital expects him to do and what he feels he should do. A decision for Dr Sloan in Diagnosis Murder next on BBC One Scotland.